Hi, I'm here in Brussels, Belgium, and I'm with Mark Shuttleworth, the founder of the Ubuntu project, and we're at Ubuntu Developer Summit for Ubuntu 10.10, um, Maverick Meerkat. And Mark, you uh, gave your keynote or your opening session here, and you talked about Windicators and um, the new desktop for UNR. Can you expound just a little bit more on, on those from your keynote? Well, this is uh, the fourth release now in this in a series of releases where we've been putting a lot of energy into the desktop experience. We have as our goal a Linux desktop experience that is free, beautiful, functional, sort of sets the standard rather than catching up with uh, with the proprietary world. Um, we've made some really good progress over the last um, three releases, and in the next one, we'll be delivering some really interesting new components. Um, I think the full the full the full roadmap takes us out you know, another four releases, but this next one is going to be a critical one because we'll be delivering Unity, which is a new desktop shell for the netbook, um, so designed for very compact environments, ultimately designed for touch-oriented environments, ultimately you, you know, a, a, an experience that I think will break new ground, uh, both for Ubuntu and for free software. You know that um, I do enjoy the code names, the, the animal code names for, for all these releases. And last time it was Lucid Lynx, that, that clear-minded, thoughtful predator. This time um, it's a Maverick meerkat and the Maverick part of it. Do you think that this new, between Windicators and the new Unity desktop and, and those ideas, do you think those are Mavericks of the open source community? I think this is the sort of release where we can shake things up. You know, if I look at our broader cadence, we have a, a sort of a four release cycle, um, where we, uh, we we start by shaking things up, and then we end we close with a with a very tight, um, lucid style LTS release, which will then support for a long period of time. So it behooves us, um, within the constraint of always delivering a high quality release, it behooves us to try and take some of the big steps that we need to take in this next cycle. So architecturally, we'll probably take some big steps towards um, consolidating 32 and 64-bit um, architectures, which is a very significant piece of engineering. And if we can get the foundations of that laid in this cycle, then we're confident we can we can work out all the kinks by the by the LTS. Um, visually, Unity is going to be an anchor property for us, an anchor piece of technology. So getting it in in this first cycle is uh, is really important. Um, uh, this is obviously also a, a really exciting time in terms of what else is going on in the Linux ecosystem. The work of Android, the work of Mego, the work of uh, Chrome OS. Um, so uh, w I feel like we're right at the center of the tornado and, uh, and we just have to keep our heads down and do b brilliant, beautiful work for 1010. And it is beautiful work. Lucid rolled out and it's such a polished um, um, distribution, a, po a polished release. Um, I know here, one, one of the more popular sessions that have been just crowded to the point where I noticed the people who were scheduling on the, on the summit schedule are having to find rooms that would hold greater people for the ARM sessions. ARM is a hot topic right now. Can you talk just a little bit about Ubuntu on ARM? It's really interesting that you, that you say that. I've noticed it as well. That there seems to be this real convergence of interest in low-power um, computing, either for the mobile, but also for server and other, and other areas. I must say that that, that that caught me somewhat off guard, that just the, the, the general nature of the interest. But I think that's one of the advantages of having a, a, a forum like UDS. It attracts people from the full spectrum of open source, the full spectrum of the community. And you just never know what's going to really be the sort of the hot topic. And, and I would agree with you, in, in this round, ARM very much is a hot topic. Um, there are a lot of folks here who are interested in making Ubuntu work across the full range of ARM devices. There are other people who are interested in making it a lot easier to support other ARM devices. ARM is a much more fragmented ecosystem fundamentally, or has been a much more fragmented ecosystem. So a lot of focus here on defragmenting that ecosystem and making it possible to develop for ARM in the same easy way that you can currently develop for x86. Um, I think the emphasis on green computing perhaps has, has, has made people um, interested in, uh, in kind of low power uh, computing from the data center through to, uh, to, to, to the mobile environment. Um, but fundamentally, I think people are just interested in, in, in a form factor that lets them do really cool and interesting things. Uh, and, and that ecosystem, that ARM ecosystem, is full of cool and interesting things, from plug computers, which you, know, you just plug in and they're, they're up and running, they take virtually no power and they're, they're a server in the house, um, through to wearable computers and, uh, and, and, and kind of really scalable cloud infrastructure. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see where that goes. Um, I'm delighted you know, 
to be a, for us to be a catalyst for all of that goodness. And if there are folks out there who want to play with ARM, it's getting really easy to do. You know, you can get a Beagle board or you can get any any number of different reference boards. Just install Ubuntu on it and off you go. I think that even me, I, I attended a couple sessions at a, at a couple Linux events and, and heard about Ubuntu on ARM, and I, I was keen to start asking questions. So um, I'm glad that you said a little bit about that. In your press release before... Um, um, 10.04 was released. You talked a little bit about that opportunistic developer. And I know last cycle we rolled out some opportunistic developer weeks and had, had people uh, write some applications. In your mind, who is that opportunistic developer? The opportunistic developer is someone who has a, an idea that can be realized quickly and they want to publish, they want to produce some software that expresses that idea and publish it easily to, to a wide audience. And so uh, we're doing work um, to, to make that possible across the full, uh, across the full chain. Um, at, at, on the developer side, uh, there's, there's work making the tools easier so that people can get up and run and produce an application. But then also on the publishing side, we're making it possible so that, that, that for people to, to develop some software and publish it to users of a stable release um, very smoothly, very easily, and, and, and have that show up in the existing software center. So we're kind of breaking the lock that the core distribution team has on the software center, making it possible for people to publish software into the software center, even if it was developed well after the, the release was published. It seems to me like Ubuntu, um, when it first started, was more of this operating system. And now, um, with Lucid, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but that is a benchmark. That's a milestone that now kind of moves Ubuntu into the platform, that development platform, um, not just that I'm just going to use it to run my latest applications. Is that sort of the direction that Ubuntu is, is really moving with the opportunistic developer and all those tools so people can build on Ubuntu? Well, if you think about it, the, the opportunistic developer is, is still a developer, so so still very much part of our traditional audience. What's changing, though, is that there's the sense that that um, the community now has two arms. One is the developers themselves, and the other is people who are, who are a great audience for the developers' work. And so there's this meme spreading that if you, if you, if you, if you want to reach that audience of still relatively early adopters, but, but more consumer-oriented people, uh, Ubuntu is a great place to do the development and then to publish the results of that. I'm really glad that you stopped by to talk to us about um, um, what, to, what has been going on here, what happened with, with Lucid. What is... If you had to look forward in time and you had a crystal ball right now with you, what would be that thing that's sort of holding your attention for 10.10 that you're or 10.10.10 that, that you're looking for and, and that, that excitement point that or hook that's in, in Maverick that, that if you could point that one little thing out that that glimmer of fun or light. I guess. Wow, I wish I, I wish I could put my finger on just just one thing. I, I, I think the th the three things I'd call out there. Um, one is the is the is the PC the traditional PC ecosystem. Um, we're now seeing Ubuntu showing up on multiple devices, going into multiple markets from multiple different PC vendors. But it'll be really interesting to see how that escalates over over the course of this next cycle. The second piece I'd I'd, I'd highlight is is what you pointed out this kind of buzz around ARM and where that goes. Uh, it's hard to predict, but I, I think it's going to be very interesting to, to, to watch. And then the third piece that I, that I focus on, again, is, is cloud computing. Um, it is so easy to get up and running with a new server or, or get a new capability up and running in the cloud. I think that's going to be a real hotbed for innovation, and so I'm very interested to see what, what people do with that over the next six months. Well, I'm very curious to see um, how Ubuntu sheds light through the clouds in the, in the next uh, release. And, um, want to see this maverick spirit take off in the, in the open source world. So, so thank you so much, and we're really looking forward to seeing what uh, Maverick Meerkat and Ubuntu 10.10 brings this next cycle. Thank it's not, you. It's not really me that you should thank. It's all the, all the mavericks who come together to a place like this, you know, Belgium, Brussels, in late spring, to, uh, to kind of explore what's possible with free software. It's them that will decide, you know, what comes out.